let's turn our Bibles to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to look at verses 13 through 17. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. The title of the message is, What is Your Final Authority? What is Your Final Authority? What is Your Final Authority? Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Brother Kelvin, can you pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and we praise you once again that we get to gather here to worship you Amen. and to study your word, Lord. Lord, just thank you that while we we're sinners, uh, you died on the cross for our sins, Lord. Amen. We thank you for receiving those who are with you right now, Lord. And for those who are still here on the earth, Lord, there must be a purpose, and that is to serve you, Lord. And we thank you for that. Give us your word. Give us your Holy Spirit. Give us the strength and the power Amen. to serve you, God. Amen. Lord, there's so many. Uh, it's bad enough that there are lies out here, Lord. Doctrines of the de devil, Lord, that's mm -hmm. deceiving mm -hmm. the world. Right. So many are unsaved, Lord. But it's even worse when, you know, there are people that are saved and still following the wrong doctrine. We just thank you for the Bible-believing church, the KJV Amen. Bible, Amen. Lord. Amen. We thank you for the Bible-believing pastors Amen. pushing the truth to Amen. us, teaching us the right doctrine, Lord. Helping us to, uh, to discern the right from wrong, Lord. And we just uh, praise you for that. Lord, please uh, bless Pastor Jay with the Amen. Holy Spirit. Yes. Help us to understand. Uh, help us to use what we learn in our daily lives. Thank you so much once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 What is your final authority? If you've been in and around Bible-believing circle, you hear it many, many times. The final authority. It is a, something that you will base off your decisions on, your life's decisions, whatever it may be, or your daily decisions, whatever it may be. You will base off your decision on this authority. People are confused and mixed up about what they make their decisions upon nowadays. They hear the news and they make decisions. They hear from their friends and they make their decisions. They go to the internet, they go to their daily news articles and make their decisions. But as Bible believers, you're supposed to make decisions based off of what the Bible says. It is sad to hear many times as you know, our brother prayed Say people are uncertain, they're ambiguous, they don't know what to do about certain you know, decisions that's coming along their life. When Bible clearly tells you what to do. It is, it's almost ironic when you say you're a Christian and you're asking about certain things that's straight from the Word of God. You know, Bible says abstain from all appearance evil. And you're asking me, uh, you know, should I go to the bar? You know, should I go, should I go to the bar? You know, because, you know, I want to do something for the Lord there. Right. It doesn't work that way. And one of the hardest thing for even a newly saved Christian or Christians that's been saved for a long time is getting rid of their music. And I talked to one of our dear sisters last week, and it becomes, it's apparent that a lot of people ignore the final authority. Yes. You are sitting on your pews. You're listening to the word through the internet ministry. And you know exactly what the Bible says. But you refuse to listen to it. Then what is your final authority? Your final authority is not the word of God. Your final authority is you. Yes. At the end of the day, you make decisions. At the end of the day, you make choices and you have to live with it. And you can't come back and say, Lord doesn't love me. 
why is my life so horrible at current stage? You know, I've been a Bible believer for a long time. I've been saved for a while. But man, it seems like there's no future in my life. Spiritually, I'm down. You know, physically, materialistically, I'm down. Why is that happening? Why? Because I guarantee you have not put the Word of God as your final authority. People say, we're so original. I mean, I'll point it to you're the devil speaking. Right? If someone questions the authority of the King James Bible, sometimes they don't know because then you have to educate them. I didn't know, but I learned and I, you know, I weighed the evidence. I, you know, I studied, and it is the perfect word of God, preserved word of God. But if they know this, they went through schooling, you know, secular schooling or you know, this worthless education that you learn from Bible colleges, and they say, you know, only original manuscript, original Greek is the Word of God, you point at them and you say, you're the devil speaking. That's right. They might wake up at that time. I mean, if you just keep it in your heart and then they think they're right, all these scholars right there. I mean, if you read Dr. Ruckman's commentaries, you know, half of them is talking about all those scholars. You know, why? Because they attack the integrity of the King James Bible, God's preserved word. And at this day and age, right, when there are so many false doctrines out there, people's final authority is someone else's words. That's true. Like, you go, okay, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, for that verse, I'm going to go to this guy, YouTube. I saved that channel. For that verse, I'm going to go to this guy, you know, that saved the verse, or, you know. I mean, they might be Bible believers or whatnot, right? But a lot of times you have so many resources and they're, you know, wrong. And instead of going straight to the Word of God, you always try to go somewhere else. And that just tells you that your final authority is not the Word of God. Your final authority is something else. So as I go back to music, you know, let's all turn our Bibles to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. It's something that too many Christians continue to struggle when Bible clearly says what to do. You are asking, oh yeah, what about this contemporary Christian music? What about this worldly pop music? What about this music, 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 this and that? You know, Bible tells you the answer. Don't listen to it. Get rid of it. I mean, that's it. No means no. Don't, don't listen to it. Why are you listening to it? Then you're going straight against the Word of God. Then your final authority is not the Word of God. Your final authority is you and your, your lust, your flesh. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, the Bible says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17, here's the answer. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. So the Bible clearly says, what Spirit likes flesh hates. What flesh likes, spirit hates. Yes. Then, it does not make sense that you could combine these two and think that it's okay. Having godly lyrics, oh, I love Jesus, you know, Lord, I lift your name on high, you know, over and over, you know, lyrics go over and over, right. along with, you know, worldly secular music. Man, it's so funny how unsaved people mock Christians when they drop the lyrics, it sounds just like worldly music, worldly pop song. And then you combine those two, you think that you please God when the Word of God specifically said, flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Then if you have any doubts, if you didn't know what to do when it comes to music, worldly music, then it tells you, get rid of it. You know, some people go above and beyond. They they burn it. You know, I don't expect you to go home and gather all your, you know, CDs or, I guess that's a long time ago, gather your, you know, files and, you know, just destroy it and burn it. But, you know, just, just answer simple. God's word isn't supposed to be too complicated except for, you know, those heavy doctrines. Certain practical stuff, living your life as a Christian, 
God clearly lays it out so that simple men like you and me can understand. Then, if you are not getting rid of worldly music, think about it. If those beats do not praise God, like those hymns that we sing, then it's devil's music, Amen. right? Yes. If those beats are asking your flesh to move, put your arms up and wave it, that's not godly music. Then you need to get rid of it. Why are you hesitating? You know why? Because your final authority is not the word of God. Your final authority is you. That's why you're stuck where you are in Christian life. Yes. You don't grow you could be inside the church. You could be listening to many, many things. However, if you don't treat the Word of God as your final authority, you just treat it as some literature out there, you're trying to get something out of it. You know, we read certain journals out there, articles out there, books out there. Why? Because we want to get some information. But we don't put them as final authority. If science journal says you have to get vaccinated 100 times, I don't trust it, right? right? But some people do. That's their final authority. But my final authority, final authority is the word of God. Amen. Whatever he says, I'm going to do. Whatever he says, don't do, don't do. Yes. I mean, sometimes I don't understand, but I just go along. Why? Because I believe it. Just like little kids, right? Kids don't understand what their parents are telling them to do half of the time. Maybe all of the time. Don't touch that. They're like, I, I, don't, I don't know. But they say, okay, since you're mom, since you're my dad, I'm going to trust you. Because you never did anything intentionally to harm me. Majority of the time, parents don't do that, right? There's always cuckoos out there, you know, very evil people. But normally, you know, daddy and mommy will not tell their kids to jump into a, you know, some acid so that they'll burn. No. So, and the kids, knowing that, listens to their parents, you know. But as a Christian, the Lord has given you so many, so many things to go by, so many things to listen to, and the Lord's always warning you. You know, the sin that you are involved with, you know? I mean, is it worth it? You know, it, it, as time passes by, it's not going to be worth it, right? I mean, it's a guarantee. You could talk to, you know, mature Christians, right? People who lived a Christian life for a long time. They're going to tell you, and I tell you from my own experience, final authority, if I follow my final authority, I don't have been in that trouble in the first place. Only reason I'm in trouble right now is because I neglected my final authority, Instead of listening to my final authority, I listen to myself. Bible says, you know, be ye holy for I am holy. So you need to be holy. However, a situation comes where it makes you unholy. Then you could follow two things. You could follow the word of God, reject that temptation, the flesh, the world, and the devil. And then, you know, just do as what the Bible says. Or reject the word of God, and you listen to the flesh, the world, and the devil. What fruits will that bring about? Because you reap what you sow. Man, when your final authority is not the word of God, you're going to bear a lot of, lot of sinful fruits. Yeah. And it's going to hurt you, and it's going to hurt your family, and it's going to hurt you and your family for a long, long time. That's why... When the preacher preaches, when the word of God preaches you, you know, when the testimonies you hear where they say, you know, listen to the word of God, stay away from sin because you're going to pay for it. Look at David, our prime example. You know, David, when everybody was out there in the battle, he stayed home, you know, and then, and what happens, right? Bathsheba, Uriah became an adulterer and a murderer. Why did that happen, right? You know, because he was idle, of course, one of the ways, you know, there's always flesh, lust involved, right? But 
If you do as what the Bible says, you'll be out there in the battle. You'll be fighting. Like, you and I, if we do as what the Bible says, there will be less opportunity for you and me to sin. I mean, fine, God's word is so perfect, and it does not give you any excuses to say, you know what, at that moment, I had to choose something else other than the word of God. Many Christians sitting here, you're here where you are, and because you do have some testimonies where God tests you, and that's normal. You know, as a Christian, you will be tested, right? So if you haven't been tested, something's wrong with you. So, you know, check your salvation, you know, check your faith, right? Because if you have been saved, devil's not going to leave you alone in the first place. And Lord will test your faith. And during those trials, during those testing times, I know some of you guys have chosen the Lord, chosen the word of God instead of what the devil was presenting. And your faith has grown dramatically. And also, Lord has blessed you spiritually for sure, even physically, materialistically, what not. Why? Because you chose the word of God, the final authority, instead of what other people say. I mean, if someone says, okay, the word of God clearly says preach the word, Amen. right? In season, out of season. So it's a command. And then you want to preach the word, and you know it's the right thing to do. And you go out there and you preach. And just like, you know, Brother Yoon's testimony, Lord's going to protect you and bless you for it. Because you're doing what he tells you to do. Whenever you're doing what God tells you to do, you could have 100%, 1,000%, million percent conviction that Lord's going to bless it. That's where you want to be. You want to be at a place where you know for sure that I'm doing something that Lord's going to bless me for it. Then Lord's going to bless you to the point where you won't have any worries. You won't have any nervousness. You won't have any of those doubts. When you're doing something and when you have doubts, there's something wrong. That's Holy Spirit convicting you right away. Hey, 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 hey. You know, that's not the thing that you should do. Go back to the Word of God. Open the Word of God, listen to the Word of God, and see that you're doing something wrong. But many times you already know you're doing wrong. I mean, you know, let's not kid ourselves, right? A lot of times when you're sinning, you already know that you're doing something wrong. You know, right? You're listening to wrong music. You're trying to justify yourself. Oh, man. I just broke up, you know, in this bad relationship. I need something to feel me better, right? Oh, man, I got, you know, lectured by, you know, my boss today. I need to make me something better. Oh, man, I fought with my spouse today. Man, I fought with my kids, right? You know, my job is going nowhere. You know, things aren't working out. So they find a way to make him feel better. Instead of reading the word, praying, Listening to hymns, they go to, you know what? Something's going to make me feel good, and that's going to be, you know, worldly music. Uh, talking about worldly things, right? Fleshly stuff, constantly. And you're like, oh, man, now, now I feel kind of relieved and better. I mean, that's your flesh talking. The whole time, your, your spirit is grieving. You know, you're grieving the Holy Ghost. The whole time you're making your flesh happy. I mean, just like the verse that we saw in Galatians 5.17, whenever you're making your flesh happy, what do you think is happening? You're making your spirit sad. You're grieving the Holy Ghost. Man, when you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, so it's not like the you know, Holy Spirit could just leave you right now, right? We're not in the Old Testament, right? In the church age, you're sealed with the Holy Ghost. And you're constantly grieving your Holy Ghost by choosing the wrong final authority. Yes. At the judgment seat of Christ, how are you going to bear it? How are you going to go through it? You know, sometimes you and I have a tunnel vision. We don't really see anything beyond. But you and I have to see a greater picture. 
I mean, look at the rapture, you know, look at the thousand year kingdom, look at eternity. Then you're like, you know what? Now I better wake up. I mean, you need to wake up or like right now. I mean, if you're not going to wake up right now, when will you? When the world's going upside down, pandemics happening everywhere, you know, I mean, everybody's telling you what to do. And if you don't do it, you can't go anywhere. You can't even eat anywhere without showing some proof nowadays. How the world has turned upside down, right? I mean, why do I have to show every proof? I mean, I have to take out like a thousand documents to go anywhere nowadays. And it's going to get worse. Those globalists are going to work towards, you know, making everything one. And as the world turns into this one world, one government, as we know what's going to happen, what are you doing about it? Are you living your life just lecklessly, you know, like just no concern at all, where you're like, you know what, you know, I go with the flow. And I think that's the dumbest thing people say many times. I go with the flow. I mean, what flow are you flowing? I mean, following, right? I mean, are you following this when the river goes down and picks up this, you know, marijuana legalization? They're like, okay, I'm going to go with the flow. You know, the whole, whole place, whole complex, whole neighborhood is, you know, full of joint smell. So, you know what? I'm going to smell like them. So, I'm going to try it because I could buy it. Now, it's legalized, right? Man. And then you go down the stream, you do, there's smoking, right? You know, there's like a legitimate, illegitimate, you know, relationship everywhere. Like, oh, yeah, you know, it's fine. Let's sleep with everybody, right? You know, marriage is just a saying, right? You know, let's have an open relationship everywhere. I mean, it's amazing that, you know, Christians, so-called Christians, accept those type of living. I mean, I mean, what happened? What does the Bible say? You're a fornicator and you're an adulterer. But, you know, it's with the flow. We're going with the flow, right? Flow goes down, right? You know, and then you got to be like, okay, whatever government tells me to do, I'm going to do everything. You know, because that's following the flow, right? You know, you do up to against, up to what's not against the word of God. That's it, you know. I mean, if, if, if what, they is, what they're doing is aligned with the word of God, hey, follow. You, you don't just say no to them just because they're government or whatever entity it is. You do until you know what the word of God says. But if they oppose the preaching the gospel, then you have to pray and act otherwise, right? But find different ways. Don't go out there and, you know, blatantly break the law, you know. No, you ask God for wisdom. And then you preach the gospel that way. In order for you to do that then, you have to make sure what your final authority is. My final authority is the word of God, no matter what someone says. And it is a King James Bible, 1611. It's not anything else. Because there's going to be so many people coming out at you. NASB, NIV, NLT, all those things. You know, it's, wording's only different. You know, fool yourself. I mean, have you ever really studied the history of the Word of God? Man, don't just listen to what people say. You do. You weigh your own evidence, right? What tree, what lineage your Bible came from. Think about the missing verses, right? Think about the imitation of New King James Bible against the King James Bible. Just because you change the names, just because you change the wording, it's not going to hide you from what you really are. God shines light on the truth. Then, when you have it, when you have that conviction, don't just stay there. You have to act upon it. I know that many of you guys believe what I just said. But however, you're just stuck there. When When it's time to make decisions... You don't go to the Word of God. You always go to something else to make decision, right? You always have to listen to your psychologist, psychiatrist, school counselor to make the decision. You have to listen to your, you know, workers, friends before you make your decision. Why is it that Christians never go to the Word of God first to make decision? Why is it that you have to go somewhere else to make your decision, right? And, and there are certain topics that might not be clear, then go to your pastor, right? Yeah. Ask him. I mean, that's what God put him there for, Amen. to lead the flock, right? Amen. 
And it's time for you to really wake up, yes. right? If you're going to be unequally yoked together with the worldly things, flashly things, devilish things, you know, don't expect to do anything for the Word of God. Don't expect to stand for the Word of God. You know, there are many instances that's going to come along in your life because God will test you. Someone will be talking about, King James is not the Word of God. You know, King, King James was a bad man, Right? King James, it's just like the, any other Bible. What are you going to do? Are you going to just sit there and just hide yourself and then go to the back of the you know, room? Or are you going to stand up for the Word of God? I guess the devil didn't want me to preach that part. <laughs> right? So, you, have to be, you have to stand up. Think about it. We don't worship Dr. Ruckman. Everybody understands that. We appreciate him because he stood for the King James Bible. Yes. Because, he, because of his teachings, we still had King James Bible. When the whole U.S., the world was trying to turn to other Bibles like NASB, he stood for the truth. Amen. That's why we follow the teachings, just like what we read in our text verses. Right? Timothy followed Paul's teachings because God used those teachings. Right? Then... If you have all those resources at your disposal, think about it. If you and I were in, you know, Timothy and Apostle Paul's time, we wouldn't have the current revelation, current teachings that God shown through Dr. Ruckman. Now you have, a, you have, I mean, commentaries, you know, from Genesis to Revelation. I mean, you have all the answers out there. You have hundreds and thousands of, you know, books, right? And that will help you with your final authority, right? Yes. Then what are you going to do about it? Are you going to just be stuck there and like, you know what? You know, life is what it is. There's Brother Yoon there doing God's work, right? There's brother and sister there. You know, I'm just going to live my normal life, you know, just go on with it. And then your normal life is actually a sinful life. You know, don't try to lie to people, yeah. right? Don't, don't lie to God, right? Your normal life is a sinful life. When it's not a godly life, it's a sinful life. Simple as that. When you're, doing, when you're not doing what the Bible says, when your final authority is not the Word of God, you're living a sinful life. I mean, you could repeat after me, right, in your mind. You know, I'm living a sinful life when sinful life. the Word of God is not my final authority. Because at the end of the day, you're just going to justify everything you do. Simple illustration. You're hurting for money, and you need money. But the Bible says God will supply all your needs, right? You work hard. You be diligent. And God's going to bless you that way. Yes. But you can't wait. And you don't trust the word of God. So what do you do? You drive to Las Vegas. And then you pray hard to God. <laughs> Nowadays, you know, there are a lot of, you know, online casinos too. You pray hard to God. And you're like, God, bless me, please. You know, I'm your child. I want to do something for you. And then somehow, you win some money. Right? You, you do the thing. And then sometimes, you know, some four stars or seven stars, like, line up. Yeah, four sevens, ten sevens, you know, lucky number seven everywhere. And then you're like, oh, Lord, thank you for blessing me. You're hearing my prayer, Lord God. And then suddenly, after, you know, you have earned or it's not earned, you have won enough money to cover all your things, greed comes in and you cannot avoid it. There's nobody ever going to just stop. And like, oh, Lord, you're blessing me more. Huh? I just needed, you know, 5,000. Now you're giving me like six, seven, eight thousand. 8,000. Okay, Lord, you're going to bless me more and more. And then before you know it, you lose everything. Because that's, the, that's like a sim, you know, sinful like a chronicle, right? It goes up. You know, sin's going to bless you a little bit, you think, and eventually it's going to come down, crash, yes. like literal crash. Oh, yes. 
it doesn't happen you know, gradually a lot of times. It happens overnight in those cases. And then you're in a room by yourself and you're complaining to God, God, I thought you blessed me. What happened, Lord? It's time for you to really reflect and get right with the Lord during these times. You know, you have to confess your sins and get right. What you've done, what you did is wrong. You just sinned. You sinned against God. You went against the word of God. What do you expect? And God did not bless you. It's the devil who did those things. The devil was playing with you and blessing you for it. Whether it's gambling, whether it's, you know, wrong relationship, right? Whether it's, you know, materialistically doing something wrong and stuff. All those things. Don't ever think that God is blessing you for it. And your blood is increasing. It's the devil working in it. And then you're going to crash. And some of you have crashed already. And you've been crashed for a while for some of you. Why are you just staying there? God's giving you another chance. God's giving you multiple chances to get right with the Lord. Make sure that you put final authority in your heart. And no matter what happens, when those same trials come back to your life, you're going to go back to your final authority. You know, I fell down once, twice, three times, maybe ten times. But I'm not going to fall anymore. You know what? You know, Lord has given me enough grace and mercy. I'm going to stand for the word of God. You know what? I might have to work a lot more. I might have to, you know, have more sweat drop. You know what? I'm going to do it because that's the right thing to do. No more easy way. No more sinful way. Just get out of those mindset, right? And when those mindsets are gone and you do have final authority in your life and you have set your heart, no matter what, Lord, whether I have to scrub the toilet, whether I have to walk a mile, whether I have to do all these things, yes. I'm going to do it. You know why? Because that's the right thing to do. Because that's what the Bible says. Because that is my final authority. When you have your final authority set in your heart, where nothing else will sway it, whew, think about the spiritual blessing. Think about a joyful life you live. All your frowning faces, all your, you know, oh, wow, where in my life going kind of attitude will be gone. Amen. You know what? I'm doing something right, finally, for a change. I'm living in the will of God for a change. Finally, man, I'm just going to continue. Yeah. I hope Lord comes back today yes. to find me yeah. living in his will. And no matter what happens, no matter what test comes my way, no matter what devil presents itself, no matter how flesh and the world presents itself, I'm going to say no. I'm just going to say no, you devil. I'm just going to say yes only to the word of God. Let's pray. Dear Father, we tend to forget what our final authority is. Our final authority is the word of God, Lord. KJV 1611, without any doubt. But many times because of our sinful ways, because of our lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, because what the devil and the flesh and the world presents us, we try to justify and sin and trying to get away with it, Lord. Help us to come clean before you, Lord God, for all those days and months and years where we neglected our final authority and lived a prodigal life, Lord. Help us to get right with you like that prodigal son. Help us to come back, you know, with our repenting heart, Lord. And help us to live a life that's, you know, pure and holy, pleasing to you, living in your will, having our final authority set so that no matter what the tempter does, no matter what the world and flesh and you know, everything else presents to us, we're going to be able to endure, fight back, stand strong, and just stand for the Word of God. And Father, I pray that you'll bless upcoming presentation and message. And I pray that you'll bless everyone throughout the week until we meet again, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone.